One day I noticed I was driving home. When I got there, I didn't even realize how I got there because I don't remember any of the landmarks or the stop signs. Well, that was because I wasn't fully present in the moment. Well, we are about to talk about being mindful coming up. Stay tuned. Living Optimally with Pamela Jones is brought to you by Meditating Motivators. Hi, I'm Pamela Jones, your Meditating Motivator. Welcome to another episode of Living Optimally with Pamela Jones. Today, we're going to talk about all of the things that you really don't think about. Do you ever find yourself sometimes where you're just going? Sometimes I might be driving and you feel like, wow, how did I end up here? That's not where I was trying to go. Or you're trying to get to another destination in life or on a project or on a job or something and you just can't concentrate because you're thinking of a thousand other things that you need to do. And I always love this because as a mom, you're always running. Did I turn off the stove? Did I do these things? Well, not enough times do we just be able to be still. So today we're going to talk about mindfulness. Now, a lot of times that's a term that a lot of people don't think about. What is mindfulness? We're going to talk about what it is, what, how it benefits us overall with our health, and what are some of the most important reasons why we should. And then I want you to be able to ask yourself, am I really giving myself a lot of time to do mindfulness throughout the day? So let's jump right into it. Mindfulness. First of all, what is it? I like to just give you simple definitions of it. Now this is my definition. I look at mindfulness as just being fully aware in the moment of your thoughts, of your environment, whatever it is that you're focusing on. And I'm going to show you a few things because some of the things I've always talked about on some of the things that you want to be able to be mindful. Why is that important? Because mindfulness actually connects mind, body, and spirit. Remember like a lot of times people always talk about like yoga is good for exercise and helping the body physically, but yoga is excellent for connecting the mind, body, and spirit. So that's mindfulness, being fully present in the moment, being fully present in the moment. Now, the important reason why that is something we should do on a regular basis is because mindfulness helps us to focus on just what is without the judgment. Now, that's important to do just in life. Let's do things not right or wrong, just they are, okay? So, now as you see, I have some different props here. So what I want to be able to focus on, when I'm talking about mindfulness, I'm going to show you how even mindfulness can help your overall health. A lot of times people are saying, I'm trying to lose weight or I've been trying to lose weight or gain weight or whatever and I just still can't do it. I don't really eat that much. All of these things, I'm going to show you how what mindfulness looks like when we're looking at different foods that we're eating. Now, I all I have often said, looking at those five senses, I go back to childhood because we learned them as a childhood, but then we stopped as an adult focusing on them. What do I mean by those senses? Taste, touch, smell, sound, and then being able, what does it smell like? I always like to start with maybe like this apple. When I'm eating an apple, I always often tell people because a lot of times what we're doing is our schedules are so busy now and we're running and running and running. I remember when my son was very young, I remember I was working a full-time job. I was trying to get up in the morning, get him dressed, get him off to school, go to work a full-time job. Oh, I got to run to school. I got to go pick him up, scoop him up. He's got baseball practice. He's got football practice. So what I have to do, we got to make a mad dash to the baseball park. And what's at the baseball park? hot dogs and french fries and potato chips. And so what we were doing was just mindlessly eating. Now, I'm going to show you the importance of mindful eating and not mindless. A lot of times when people are trying to focus on their health, they don't realize you're eating mindless. Now, another thing is important. I, I actually help so many people because I learned this within myself. Now, on other episodes, and if you're, con if you're in contact with me on so many different level levels, excuse me, you know that I've often said I used to be 75 pounds heavier. Now, what I also discovered is that I was an emotional eater. 
Now, a lot of times people are emotional eaters, and you're eating it not because you want it, not because it's healthy for you, or if it's good for you, you're just eating for the sake of eating. So when you're rushing and you're on the go, you're just grabbing something in the car, you're grabbing something out on the go, you never plan meals, then you're eating mindlessly. So we're going to talk about those things, what emotional, what even triggers emotional eating, and the mindless eating. Most of the time, our poor health is attached to mindless eating. So let's focus on the mindful eating. So let's take this beautiful apple here. I like to be able to say mindful eating is when you're taking this apple. Let's just start with sight. Don't rush your eating. Enjoy your food. When you have something there, be able to look at it. What does it look like? Fully go in your mind. Now, if somebody's there and you want to be able to talk about it and they don't want to look at you like you're crazy, then go for it. I often do it. That's okay. You do that as well. But looking at it, what does it look like? I can look at it and definitely tell the color detail. I want to be able to describe the stem, the different colors, how it changes, the specks on the outside. Be able to really admire your food. Now, another thing that I want to be able to say is, what does the shape look like? Why is it shaped like this? And then I can be able to go through the different things to be able to be mindful of that. Now, sound, I might just say, what, how firm does it sound? What do I hear? When I thump that, I can actually be able to say, oh, sometimes, you know, now I'm, I'm, I'm guilty of this. I might put my thumb on an apple and squeeze them like, mm, mm it's soft. I don't want that. I personally like a firm apple. So if you do that, that's okay. You don't have to tell anybody in probate. Your secret's safe with me. So what does it sound like? And also another thing is when I bite into it, Listen to that crunchy crispiness. Now, that's something I enjoy. That's being mindful when you're actually eating that apple. And I'm just using an example of an apple. And keep in mind, you can do this with any of your food. And I highly suggest that you do this with any of your food. And also, I did this with my, with my, with my children because what I did was this would help them not even eat so fast. Appreciate your food. That way, when I was younger, I used to hear my grandmother say, let your food digest. Let your food digest. You're just eating and you're already ready, ready to run out the door. So it's giving you a chance to appreciate your food. So what does it sound like when I, when I bite into it? Now, when I go to sight, we talked about that. We talked about the sound, but taste. Oh my goodness. There's nothing like a juicy, sweet tasting apple, especially in this hot weather that we're going through in the summer. But when you're going through that bite, does it taste? What, is it juicy? Is it sweet? Is it bitter? Now you can have different apples and being able to have it for different types of reason. I've, I love to bake with Granny Smith apples, but that's not my favorite to be able to grab because I know when I'm talking about taste, it tastes very tart to me. It's great for cooking, but it tastes very tart when I want to eat it that way. But my husband loves to eat it that way, and so that's okay. Now, when I'm going back into that, I talked about the sound, I talked about the sight, being able, what does it look like? But when, you, when you're holding that texture, that feel, that's one of the things that you can be able to have. What does it feel like? Does it feel firm? Now, this is where it comes in hand. Now, this is my own apple, but when, does it, is it firm? Then I know, guess what? In my mind, mindfulness, I'm already raising my vibrations and I'm feeling good because in my mind, my mouth is already watering. Why? Because I'm going to enjoy this apple. I already anticipate it being very sweet. All of those senses, that's mindfulness. So when you eat that apple, you'll be able to know that it is going to raise that and it's going to be beneficial. Now, do that with all of your food. I always suggest go to your favorite foods first. The favorite foods, don't just dive in, eat it, and then you're off. Then you're off, and then you, you're now trying to probably go through indigestion, but being able to be mindful so that way you can slow down and appreciate it. Now, you might not know what's in food. Another way to be mindful is like, let's say some, you also see some other things. You might say, hmm, let me study my body. I love to study and research the body. That is something that's so important to me. So I look for different key nutrients. What is so important for my body? What are some of those macro and micronutrients that all of our bodies need? Now, if I take certain things, what is this good for? What is that good for? I'll just take, let's say, for instance, magnesium. 
when you look at how does our body really focus on magnesium. Now, I'm choosing particular nutrients that people don't talk about all the time around their dinner table. And you don't talk about it day in and day out. This, because remember, most people go through mindless eating and they don't even think about what is all in it. They may know one ingredient. Somebody may say, oh, that orange has vitamin C. And that's about all they can tell you. They don't know all the many other things that it has. Or that banana, oh, yeah, it has potassium. But they can't tell you about anything else. Be mindful in it and enjoy researching what is in all of your foods. And not only what's in it, why it is beneficial to your body. And then also that mindfulness. Remember when I said it connects your spiritual what happens is you'll start feeling great because then you can reevaluate at the end after you eat it and ask yourself, how do I feel as a result after this? Now, I used to do lots of mindless eating. Now, chocolate was my downfall. Oh, my goodness. And I'm not talking about that healthy dark chocolate. I'm talking about the milk chocolate oozing. It's soft. It's creamy. And I know now that it has so many other things in it that now when I'm eating it, it tastes like heaven. It's wonderful. But when I'm done, how do I feel afterwards? I might feel like, oh, I feel like I'm, I've overdone it. Or I feel like I'm bloated. Or I feel like that now I've, I've actually put in my mind, I should not have eaten that. So now what I'm doing, remember we talked about vibration level. What I just did was I brought my vibration level down. Oh, I already know I'm going to have to do an extra two miles on the treadmill. Oh, my goodness. I'm not going to be able to fit in that dress in two weeks that I need to fit in. See, we do this self-talk that defeats us. And it's not only just that. It is what we're actually putting in it because we're not mindful of what we're doing. Now, when I talked about the magnesium, focus on that magnesium. If you take that, just take the time to research a few nutrients. Then you go through, like I took magnesium, what is it good for? A lot of people don't know. It's a good conversation piece. I don't really know what that's good for. Because as children, we hear about the calcium. We know for strong bones and teeth. And then we hear certain other things, you know, like iron for our bones and different things like that. But did you know like magnesium is really good for like enhancing mood, decreasing anxiety. It is good for strong muscles. Now, I got fascinated with this because a lot of people don't realize magnesium is something that is really good for your health heart. Your, your heart health because what that is is keeping those muscles and that's a very important muscle, trust me, that you want to keep strong. Now another thing, insomnia could be because of a deficiency of magnesium. And all of these different things like anger, imbalance on your mentality, all that could be because your magnesium is deficient and you don't have enough of it. Now, when you know that, research those, and then the fun part is finding out what foods are high in it. Now, with that being said, this is so tricky. This is interesting what I want you to understand. The avocado... For a while, you would hear certain things. Now, for years, the only way I ate avocado was in guacamole if I, if I went to a Mexican restaurant and I had some chips and salsa. And I actually had it that way. Then there was a phase that went through that, oh, you want to eat avocados because it is, it is good and healthy for you um, because they'll say it's a good fat. Most of the time, most people will say it's a healthy fat. It's a healthy fat. But they're only focusing on the fat. And if you, if you just really stop to observe, what people are doing is they're failing to tell you all the other benefits. So thinking about when I said about magnesium, guess what? An avocado is very high in that. I like to go further and be able to look at what am I putting in my body on a daily basis. Now, I would encourage you to pick a nutrient and then throughout the day take several different foods that have that. And I guarantee you, you will change your mindset because you'll feel good because you're putting that in your body. Avocado is definitely one of them. There's so many other ones. People don't realize bananas, figs. And another thing I eat on a regular basis is garbanzo beans, chickpeas. Now, a lot of times people just eat hummus because you think it's just a little snack, but guess what? It's very high in magnesium. So that's something that's also very good to be able to know is your, your apple, being mindful of what you're actually eating. If it is if it is a salad, be mindful. What, what is each leaf looking like when you're eating it? If it's a cucumber, what does it look like? Look at the seed pattern. You know, get mesmerized with your food. Love what you're eating so that way you'll love the benefit of what you're eating that it does for your body. 
Now, if you look at this, one of the things that was very fascinating with me that can also be something that you can do when you're practicing mindfulness is like the date. Now, you, it's, it's very interesting to look at it because the texture, when you look at it, to be able to describe whether it's look, it looks like a, a, an overgrown raisin or whatever, the texture, the color, some of them are firmer than others, some of them are really soft. But the one thing that is fascinating to me is dates are very, very sweet. That is a very great um, ingredient, uh, is a food that most people don't even think about adding because what, it, what we do is we mine go through and we're adding sugar we're adding sugar we're adding sugar did you know that you can actually get date sugar that you can actually use it that it is actually ground out and dried out and just use it as sugar now these foods are natural in their whole form that's something that's very important so when we're mindfully looking at a date we're looking at the color we're looking at the texture we're looking at each and every wrinkle now I just picked it up the first time I tried it and I just bit into it little did I know there is an, a, an oblong seed that's in there that really threw me for a loop because I was going in on this date hmm so uh, I was it was in a rude awakening but because it was so sweet I made up for it okay I still look cool in the meantime now one thing about when we're talking about mindful don't just eat it for the sake of it because a lot of times a person to say here try this and when you try in foods that's okay most of the time you're trying to be just because somebody said that but if you find out but if I say here you need to really try these dates because date is really good you when you talk about serotonin serotonin we definitely need because when you have that, which is one of the key ingredients in dates, it helps to be able to balance out that mood. When we talk about stress and all of these things and being able to be on the go, we're out of balance. We just Anything at work is going to set me off or whatever it is. The kids, I'm feeling like I'm overwhelmed. Dates is also something that's very good to be able to help settle that because of the serotonin that is present in dates. So that's mindfulness. Oh, my goodness. So guess what I do? Every day when I'm on the go, no matter how busy, I take one of these little bags and I make sure I, got, I have me some dates. Now, I, if I'm driving or whatever, I eat them because they're so beneficial. So it's mindfully, what is it doing to it? Remember what is in it, what ingredients is in that food. Or how does it look? Am I enjoying it when I'm chewing it? Even though you know it's not as big as the apple and the avocado, when I'm eating one, don't eat it so fast. Just I just I didn't appreciate it. And that's most of the time what people are doing. Oh, I got a little time, so you're gulping everything down, and you're going to pay for it later. Trust me, one way or the other, you're going to pay for it later. But when you're eating a date mindfully, Think about what is in it, what it's doing for my body, why is that serotonin very important, and then most importantly, how do I feel afterwards? Do I feel like I have a guilty imbalance? No. So these are some things that we'll actually talk about a lot more coming up, and then also there's a long list of other foods if you want to be able to say, what else has magnesium? I'll be glad to be able to share those with you in a deeper level. You can also be able to go to my website. I can be able to share those and be able to give you more information on other foods but I just wanted to be able to talk about that with mindfulness now another thing with mindfulness even with your foods I like to even ask you to go deeper like I do I even when I'm taking an apple not only just when I'm eating it I think about its process from the very beginning and it's always like we learn when we're small children how to be able to pray over your food before you eat. And so most of the time we get a little prayer that we learn and we recite it. And I always get tickled when I see a grown man still saying that one little prayer that they learned when they were two-year-old. God is good. God is great. And that's good, you know, but you're still praying over it. But I want to ask you starting today to go deeper mindfully. I want you to see the full process that you actually give your knowledge not your only yourself. Remember we're talking about raising your vibration? Well, guess what? I'm going to show you how you can also raise your vibration through your food as well. Because that's one thing. If we could grow our own food, that's great. But most of us can't do that because of our schedules and everything. If you grow your own food, you know the full process. And you're giving it all the energy and the vibration that you need. Now, another thing is I choose foods that are high in energy, electric, high sales foods that actually go deep to the to the cells of the food and not just go through our body
body and then we actually are paying for it whether we have all these different illnesses or we have an indigestion or we having a lot of bloating or ex excess gait, uh, weight gain. Excuse me. Now, when I'm saying mindful of this, I look at the whole process. I want to necessarily, and one of the things is being able to show you how to be able to put more energy on your food because if I got this from a store, I want to be able to look at the whole process. A lot of times when a person is praying over their food or giving energy to food, you want to go back to the first process of whoever planted it. Pray for those, those farmers. Be able to give energy to those farmers, those that picked it, that harvest that apple, to be able to get it to the stores, whatever you need to. And then when you go to the stores and you have to to buy those. I always do this and I like to be able to challenge this with even with my family with others be able to be careful in which which food is giving energy back to you as you're grabbing those. Be very mindful. Don't just be throwing food think about it. When you're just grabbing your food and throwing it and treating it any kind of way, that's the same thing. Think about that being your baby. And if you're doing that, that's such a neglect and abuse. And, and guess what? It grows up with a lot of issues if it's able to grow up because we know a lot of excess abuse, it doesn't last or it doesn't live. You can do the same thing with your food. So make sure you're mindful of the energy that you're putting in there. See that woman? She's not just someone who can make a Cancun vacation tax deductible. She's a marketer. Sharon uses constant contact email to maintain and build relationships. She sends her clients professional newsletters. And she can see who opens and clicks on them, so she knows what's working. It's not just those fast fingers that keep Sharon's clients flocking back. Sharon's a marketer, and all it took was constant contact. Try it free. Visita provides a complete business calendar, fully integrated with your client scheduling experience. You can view and manage your daily schedule and any upcoming meetings and most importantly, schedule new appointments and follow-ups with your clients. Using Visita Calendar for client scheduling will save you time and deliver a better service to your clients. Visita Calendar automatically syncs with your existing calendar on Google, Outlook, iPhone and more. Hi, welcome back. At this time, I would like to thank our sponsors for once again making this show possible. And thank you, our viewers, for continuing to tune in for each episode. Continue to send me your comments and your questions, and we'll be able to address them because we want you to be engaged. Now, I want to be able to end up with, on mindfulness, end up with a little bit of things that you can be able to implement throughout the day. Now, I want to share these things because they work with me, and I want you to be able to implement them. Now, I want you to keep this in mind. The reason why mindfulness is so important, because if you concentrate and meditate on mindfulness of everything that you do and everything you eat, then guess what? Your body will become healthier, and it will help you when you start looking at not just putting anything in your body, then what will happen is your whole system becomes cleaner. Now, I always like to say, the cleaner your body is, the better you are at connecting mind, body, and spirit. That happens when you are clean. Now, one of the things that I want to recommend that you do is to start small, but just really focus on foods that are low glycemic, okay? Things that are not so high sugary that it actually does a lot of damage. Now, you might be able to say, but I enjoy a candy bar every day, and it doesn't happen. But over time, those things can be able to make an effect. But also what people don't realize is certain foods can actually make your body so acidic. And we definitely know a lot of times you might not, you might not be overweight per se physically, but if your body is very acidic, what's going to happen is you're going to start having a lot of little subtle illnesses that you don't realize until something bigger happens. And it might be things like, okay, I have a cold all the time. And one of the things I noticed years ago, I always had sinus infections. And I just thought that was just a part of, I really blamed it on, well, I just moved to an area in Georgia, it's very humid, and all of these things. I really thought that was something to be able to 
blame it on. Why? It's because I just didn't know. So what I did was I researched more and it was a lot of the mucus that was building up and it was coming from a lot of the foods. I always like to say, and I want to encourage you, make sure you focus on what works best for your body. Now, the reason why I say low glycemic, low sugar and everything when you take in those, let your body sustain. Even back in the beginning when we talked about you want to obtain good health, but you want to maintain and sustain it. When you have that low glycemic, your body will get the burst and the nutrients it needs, but it will stay consistent. A lot of times, even with all the jobs that I worked years ago, what would happen is I would eat a meal and I'm trying to eat lunch and then all of a sudden around 2 o'clock I feel slammed. I need some coffee. I need some kind of pick me up. And guess what? There are a lot of people who still do that is because they don't have a steady flow. So that's something I want to really recommend that you do. Now, a couple things I want to leave you with. One thing is also I learned is the foods that we eat, being able to make sure, is your, is your bloodstream clean? Making sure that you're doing your part to make sure your bloodstream is clean. Now, with that being said, making sure that you are cleansing out toxins and different yeast that majority, all the food that you're eating, that whether it's processed or whatever, those things can be added in. And if you got that on top of an acidic body, you are looking for a lot of time and trips to the doctor. So you want to be able to remember before when we talked about heal thyself, you want to be able to make sure you're eating whole natural foods that you can actually go to the cellular level to work on that. Now, this last thing that I want you to really concentrate is hydration. Not just drinking anything, but really good quality natural spring water if you can be able to get those. Now, I say this is so interesting because another thing that I'm fascinated with is a lot of balance with our energy and who we are. Our bodies are 70% water. So that made me be very fascinated with water and how that reaction is. Now, another thing I'm very fascinated is with sound. I love music, but did you know that sound, different sounds itself can actually help heal the body, can actually help digestion and putting it in balance? Now, with that being said, now there was a study done from um, a gentleman that I can actually share with you, but he is from Japan and they were doing different studies and I also do a lot of regular study now with a lot of sound therapy schools that do this research year round and I've already been always been fascinated because they did so much study and was able to do microscopic to look at the different effects on water so if you look at water microscopically when there's something positive going on and they realize a lot of times when I'm saying when I'm working with somebody on affirmations choose your words and they make sure they're positive because when you're thinking about using positive words when we talked about that apple or a moment ago, putting positive energy into your food, because guess what you're going to do? You're going to eat that food. So you want to be able to make sure you're putting that in your body. So with that being said, which you're mostly not 70% water, think about what happens with us. So that study showed that whenever there was positive words said to the with, over the water, then it had a beautiful pattern. And they were able to show you what those patterns of the water is, very microscopic. Beautiful. Some of them look like these beautiful snowflakes and all these different things. But then also you can turn right around and they would use some of the harsher, lower vibrations vibrations, whether stupid, angry, all of these things that doesn't make you feel good, and they showed how the whole pattern of the water became distorted. That's very interesting. Now, going back to when I said we're primarily mostly water. So what happens when you speak positive over yourself? When you do that, then guess what shape you are making your whole existence? But when you focus and you're vibrating lower on something negative and you're saying all this negative self-talk, guess what's happening to yourself? So keep that in mind when you're doing that, whether you're praying. Enjoy your food. Be mindful. And once again, remember, mindful is just being fully aware of your thoughts, your actions, everything that's going on at that present moment. Once again, I want to thank you so much for joining us today. I hope you received so much great information. Continue to send me your questions and comments. And once again, if you want to continue, tune in to all of our upcoming episodes on bizlink.tv. And if you want to be able to have any further information, remember you can reach me by email, 
Pam at MeditatingMotivators.com or my website, MeditatingMotivators.com. With that being said, here's to living life optimally.